Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to show you guys how to make a mirror glazed dessert inspired by the all beloved apple pie. Mirror glazing is a very cool and special procedure, uh, so I'm really excited to share with you. So let's dive into the recipe. All right, so the first thing I'm going to get started on is the crumble. So in a baking tray or pan, add in the cold butter, then the brown sugar, granulated sugar, ground cinnamon, nutmeg, a pinch of salt, and finally the all-purpose flour. Mix all this together using your hands or a fork, and what you're shooting for is a mealy consistency of small little clumps that should stick together or clump up when you pinch uh, it between your fingers. After it's all mixed together, I'm going to bake this for 15 to 20 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit in the oven, and you're gonna to wanna to occasionally stir it to ensure it's an even golden brown color when it's finished. All right, so while the crumble is baking in the oven, I'm going to make a very simple apple pie filling. First up, I'm going to peel and cut the Honeycrisp apples into a small to medium dice. After that, I'm gonna get a saute pan on high heat, add the butter and the diced apples to the pan, along with the brown sugar and a generous pinch of salt. Next, I'm gonna stir the apples around to make sure that they cook evenly, and then I'm gonna to continue to cook them for five to seven minutes until tender. Right before they're just about to be finished, I'm gonna add the cornstarch, give it a few stirs uh, just to make sure that the starch is set and cook it for another minute. After that, I'm just gonna take it off the stove top and uh, reserve it until I'm ready to shape it. At this point, the crumble should be ready, so pull that out of the oven and crush the hardened crumble into a smaller crumbly uh, texture. The next step can be done a few different ways depending on the molds that you have or the trays or dishes that you have available, uh, but you just wanna make sure that you have a plan going into it and kind of have an idea of the shape that you wanna glaze. Um, here I'm gonna be using the silicone square mold and I'm going to add a little bit of the crumble to the bottom first. Then I'm going to fill up the rest with the apple filling and then finally I'm going to finish it with another round of the crumble just to give it a double layer of that crunchy crumbly deliciousness. After that I'm going to put this into the fridge uh, to set up. It should take maybe 45 minutes to an hour. While the apple cubes are setting up, I whipped up a very simple brown sugar and vanilla whipped cream that's going to fill each half of this uh, sphere mold that I have. And I'm just gonna fill them up maybe three quarters of the way, just making sure to leave a little bit of room for the apple filling. Uh, once that's finished, I'm gonna take the apples out of the fridge, remove them from the mold, and place one of them into the center of each cream filled mold. Uh, make sure not to you know, press them down too much or, you know, if you're using a different type of mold, always try to think of how much space you have in between the bottom of the mold and the filling you have, uh, especially when you're adding different fillings or different layers. Um, but once that's done, you want to smooth off the bottom of the molds with a spatula to ensure that you have a very clean looking half sphere uh, when you remove it. But when they are all ready to go, you're going to place them into a freezer to set up for about an hour. Once you got those into the freezer, it is time for the fun glaze making part. So you wanna make sure that you measure out all of your ingredients to a T for the glaze, otherwise you can end up with a ton of problems, um, you know, regarding air bubbles or the type of sheen that you have on it. 
um, and all that good stuff. So this is one of those types of recipes that just require a bit of attention at this stage. Uh, but what you're going to do is you're going to grab a sauce pot and add the water, glucose, and granulated sugar to it. Then you're going to bring this mixture to a boil and remove it from the heat. So next I'm going to add the white chocolate and sweetened condensed milk to a mixing bowl. Um, and then after that I'm going to add some cold water to a packet of gelatin. Give it a few stirs and I'm just going to let it bloom for a few minutes and just it sort of gets really gelatinous at that point. After that I'm going to add it to the hot syrup that's in the sauce pot. I'm going to stir it with a spoon and let it dissolve into the liquid. Once it's all dissolved, I'm going to pour the hot syrup over the white chocolate and stir everything together until it's a very smooth consistency. Ideally, you want to use a hand blender um, to emulsify and mix everything together. It's really the most effective manner that yields the most shiny of glazes, uh, but sometimes you don't have all the equipment that you want, so here I'm just making do. Uh, but once it's all mixed, you're going to strain the glaze through a fine sieve, cover the glaze with plastic, making sure that the plastic is actually touching the glaze um, so it prevents the skin from forming. And you're going to put this into the fridge until you are ready to glaze and finish the dessert. In the event that you are ready to glaze straight away, you're going to strain it back into the sauce pot, add a bit of food coloring if you're shooting for a specific tone, and you want to keep this on a low temperature to keep it a pourable liquid, uh, but if it's too hot, you'll end up risking burning the bottom of it, so be careful with that. Uh, the ideal working temperature for the glaze is around 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that my inside out apple pies are set, or uh, whatever these are supposed to be called, I'm going to take them out of the freezer, pop them out of the molds, then onto a wire rack ready to be glazed. Um, you could pour the glaze a number of different ways, but here I'm just going to use ladle and ladle a little bit over the top of each one. Um, and if you pour a small amount of a different colored glaze over the top, as soon as you're done pouring the first layer, you can actually get some really cool and different interesting designs. Uh, but I'm just going to use a small amount of the neutral colored glaze mixed with a little bit of nutmeg uh, that I mixed into it earlier to give it sort of a false spiced look. Um, for the outside coating. Um, as you can see, I was definitely playing around with the drizzling a little bit too much, but since this was my first attempt at glazing, I wanted to see how it would um, sort of react in different ways and uh, you know how I streaked it across it. So it was kind of an interesting experiment for me. But once they are all glazed, I'm gonna put them into the freezer for about an hour to set up. Finally, once they're glazed and you know filled and stuffed and all ready to go and set, you can pull them out of the freezer, um, take the rack off the tray, and then uh, I'm just going to very carefully with a warm spatula remove each one of these uh, little glazed half sphere apple pies. It's kind of crazy. These things look so amazing. After that, I'm going to uh, coat the outside edges with just a little bit of that crumble, um, and that's really it. I mean, these are just really cool different special unique sort of desserts and uh, it's just kind of a cool experience to make them. What up guys? All right, so I'm calling uh, these, I think the inside out apple mirror cake. I actually have no idea what I'm calling these, uh, but they look beautiful, or at least one and a half of them look beautiful. Rachel and I ate one and a half of these last night. They were just too good 
to not eat. It took a few hours for these to set up. That's why I let these sit overnight. I didn't want to mess them up or kind of ruin them in the process. So I let these sit just to make sure everything's set and ready to go and it's not going to fall apart. And uh, it looks really good. I cut into one of them yesterday and it turned out nicely. And um, yeah, I'm going to taste it and tell you guys how I did and how it turned out. So, all right. Which one do I own? Let me just show you guys the inside. This one's already cut. So you see that little perfect square? I think I got the center almost perfect on this one. You have to push it in right in the middle just so all the cream spreads evenly. But it looks delicious. All right. Ooh. Ooh, that's perfect actually. See how it just cuts? It actually got the glaze right. Mmm. Wow, 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 wow. A little bit of that crunch with the, um, that crumble topping that I put inside the apples because it's on the bottom. Well, it's on both sides because I put it inside the mold and on the top of the mold. And it's just a beautiful little layer of crumble inside. Mm. The texture for me is so important in this because I'm not the biggest fan of cooked fruit. It just has sometimes this kind of weird, tender, soft texture that can be a little off-putting to some people. Um, but adding that nice little crunchy, crumbly bit in the middle is so good. It sort of just cuts that tenderness and uh, it adds a little bit of that nutmeg spice. Kind of makes it like an inside out apple pie. Um, so, so good. But I must say the mirror glaze isn't exactly how I wanted it. Um, I need an immersion blender to make sure that it's emulsified properly. All that stirring and whipping motion can uh, incorporate air bubbles into your glaze and kind of make it a little bit more dull uh, than it, you know, it could be. But all in all, I think this recipe turned out amazing. It's actually fairly simple as long as you have the ingredients like gelatin or condensed milk. I would say a very simple procedure. It's just getting that glaze coating perfectly and getting the temperature right is sort of the hard part of this recipe. Hope you guys enjoyed this recipe. It's definitely a fun one to make. Very cool textures and uh, flavors, especially for this time of year. Yeah, it's a cool recipe. Also, I have a very cool announcement to share with you guys. I'm putting together a box of kitchen goodies uh, that have been very highly requested from uh, you guys. It's gonna have uh, my famous kitchen tweezers, uh, a couple peelers that I really, really enjoy and I feel like are a necessity in every kitchen. Some fall flavored and spiced recipes that are gonna be original to the box. Also a very cool surprise little mold that um, I think I've had more requests than any other one on my channel. So it's a, I can't, you know, I don't wanna reveal it too much because I'm gonna be putting together a recipe for it and sharing it with you in the uh, upcoming weeks. So yeah, check that out if you're interested. Make sure you give this uh, video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe at the end of this video or right now. Comment down below for future video requests, things you wanna see on my channel. And I will see you guys next time with another recipe. Later.